Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is May 12th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. You can already see the system, the next one here, rolling into British Columbia. It's going to bring a strong marine push here as we go through tomorrow. It's going to really drop the temperatures here as we go on into tomorrow, but still a pretty nice day out there for many areas. You know, there's not many low clouds out there except for the Oregon coast right now. So get out there and enjoy that sunshine here on Mother's Day, and uh, much thanks to all the mothers out there. And if my mom's watching, hello and happy Mother's Day. Now taking a look here at the visible satellite imagery, you can see those low clouds along the immediate coastline here. You can see the snow-capped mountains of the Cascades, but you can also see this system out here across British Columbia now, trying to sag down south across Washington and eventually Oregon. It's going to bring that onshore flow and that marine push can be felt across much of the area as we go through the day tomorrow. And if you look back across some of Alberta and eastern Montana here on the east side of the Rockies, that's actually smoke from ongoing fires already here. So some nasty air quality quality there. Hopefully that is not yeah, some, a sign of things to come here as we go on in towards the summer months. Now taking a look here, this was issued this morning, severe to extreme geomagnetic storm is still possible as we go through tonight. I know it didn't pan out last night and nothing like the previous night anyway, and uh, several intense coronal mass ejections are still anticipated to reach Earth's outer atmosphere by later today. So there's still a chance to see it. The problem is now mm -hmm. we're starting to get some clouds back into the region here. So you may have to be choosy with where you go set up if you do want to see the aurora borealis. So Spokane here, Sunday, warm and breezy here, then Monday, increasing clouds, widespread breezier winds here, especially down the east slopes of the Cascades of Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, afternoon showers and thunderstorms for northeast Washington and north Idaho. So enjoy today here. We're going to have a bit of a setback here. And if you're a summer weather lover here, I know a lot of people love it when we get a bit cooler again here, so I shouldn't say setback. But yeah, we're going to cool down here for a couple days, but then we're going to try to build another ridge. More on that here in a moment. Day one thunderstorm outlook. You can see some of southern Oregon. Again, here you could get a thunderstorm down towards northeast California and, of course, across the Rocky Mountains here of Wyoming and Montana up towards Alberta. There is a thunderstorm threat today. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station, station thinking of thunderstorms, thinking of thunderstorms, yeah, you can see a lightning detection system with it. And this thing is pretty accurate here. It's pretty fun to watch. Great thermometer with an ultrasonic anemometer. Source of the data for you in the cloud. Highly recommend that weather station. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. So let's see what the models are saying is going on. Here's the ridge that's been bringing us our nice weather. You can see it is on the wane here, and we're going to get that strong onshore flow as we go through tomorrow. But you can quickly see it's going to be replaced by yet another ridge here. The issue is we've still got some pretty good gradient here, the westerly gradient. So it's going to be kind of a dirty ridge. It's going to be clouds right over the top of this ridge into British Columbia here. How far south will these get? What kind of temperatures are we going to warm up to? All good questions. But if we scroll through here, you can see a little bit of difference in timing in this short wave moving through and we got this ridge again trying to hang out here but it does flatten out quite a bit by the time we go towards Thursday afternoon on both the GFS on the right and the European here on the left so that's going to cool us down somewhat but you can still see a pretty robust ridge out over the Pacific Ocean so any change in where this ridge sets up is going to have big implications on the weather here across the Pacific Northwest but right now pretty good model agreement here that we are going to be getting rid of this ridge again as we go towards the weekend at least for the Pacific Northwest and that ridge is going to back up out over the Gulf of Alaska. So if we take a look at the ensemble members also, again, European on the left, GFS on the right, pretty good agreement here as well. Nothing uh, new here showing up. You can see again agreeing that that trough will be likely dropping down on the back side here. Now taking a look at Seattle, it's showing 80 on the GFS today, so we may be looking on mid-70, 76, 77 degrees. Then we drop down Monday, Tuesday, bounce back a little bit here again, and then that next trough will be rolling in here and cooling us down. So you can kind of see the roller coaster ride we're going on here in the late spring months. And just a reminder, the first day of meteorological uh, summer is on June 1st. Now taking a look at Seattle, Tacoma on the European, 75. So somewhere between 75 and 80 degrees is probably where we're headed today, maybe 77, 78. We'll see how that goes. But then the cool down and then a little bit of a bounce back for that next trough tries to cool us down yet again. So looking at 24 hour, two meter temperature change. So uh, as I'm scrolling through Monday morning here, you can see the pretty robust marine push that's really gonna cool down much of the region as we go on in through tomorrow afternoon. You can see dropping some areas off by 10, 15, maybe some select spots by 20 degrees in a 24 hour period. And if we look at the North American model, let's scroll ahead to Monday afternoon. You can see Seattle dropping off by 17 degrees there in a 24 four hour period, you know, pretty noticeable. You're definitely going to notice this with the onshore flow. It's going to cool down quite a bit by the time we get on in towards tomorrow. 
Now taking a look at composite reflectivity, just wanted to point this out. It does show a little bit of maybe some drizzle or shower activity rolling through as we go through later tonight across some of the central sound here. We are going to start to get that onshore flow. So that is a possibility. Maybe kick off a shower or something here across the central cascades as we go through Monday morning. And you can kind of see a little bit of that showery nature here. No big precipitation maker, however, as of yet in our immediate future. Taking a look at the 80 meter wind speeds, I wanted to point this out with that marine push coming. Check it out. Look at that west surge coming down the street of Juan de Fuca as we go towards about the 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. hour. And you can really see the winds pick up on the east slopes of the Cascades. That'll be good for the wind generation out there. And you can see the northerly winds, pretty typical down the Oregon coast here. But yeah, onshore flow is going to be the theme as we go through tomorrow. You're definitely going to feel this cool down as you can see the westerlies continue to Kind of push down the Strait of Juan de Fuca and the Strait of Georgia here as we go on in through Monday afternoon. Those westerly winds continue to be gusty on into about Tuesday morning. Then we start to we start to gradually weaken that as we get another ridge trying to move in here. Now taking a look at Portland, 90 degrees yesterday, just one degree off the record high set back in 1971. And on the 10th, we did tie that record high, I think it was. And yeah, so 91 degrees. So back to back 90 degree days for Portland and another pretty warm day coming up here as well. And this is Seattle, 84 and 83, quite warm, did not hit any record highs. Those were both 87 in 2020 and 1971. We're not going to get to 82 today. So we really don't have any chance to break that record that was actually set this time last year, 2023. Now taking a look at the national blend of models, put this into motion and you can see today and look at the cool down coming tomorrow. You can kind of see it still not too bad of a day up there. I mean, it's not like we're talking about highs in the 55 degree range or something like that. You know, it's in the Willamette Valley, you're probably going to get up towards 70 and one more day here, where, you know, up in the 70s towards 80 here for Eastern Washington. Then we kind of bounce back again and start to warm things up as we go through midweek. Again, depending on just where that ridge sets up, it's going to have huge implications on our temperatures here across the Pacific North. Northwest. Looking at the 16 day precipitation anomaly on the GFS, you can clearly see we're supposed to be below normal precipitation, but above normal signal across some of the Rockies. That's a good thing for places in like eastern BC and Alberta and some areas up further along the west coast of here, British Columbia as well. And looking at the European, something similar uh, showing up also. Now, taking a look at the drought monitor here, I, I wanted to show you this for one reason, and you can see this was released on April 30th, and they do talk about the potential for some drought development likely here across eastern Washington, Idaho Panhandle, and portions of northwest Montana also. So now taking a look here, I want to show you the cloud cover forecast for tonight. So not too bad today, but you can see as we go through, it's about 5 o'clock, there's 8 o'clock right there, and you can kind of see once we go towards about 10 o'clock, you can see some of these clouds moving over, and there's going to be some lower and mid-level clouds potentially as well. It could be ruin, ruining the view here for some of the population areas here across western Washington, western Oregon, if that geomagnetic storm does strike again tonight. And then as we scroll up into the extent, you can kind of see the ridge building here, but you notice uh, it's a dirty ridge. Those clouds are going to be right over the top here, kind of spreading some clouds across the region at times as we go through the week coming up here. So again, that ridge position will mean a huge, will have huge implications on our weather coming up this week. And looking at the National uh, North American model here, high resolution as we go through tonight and kind of see that some of these high and mid-level, maybe some low-level clouds streaming in here as we go on in towards the the midnight hour or very early in the morning, so it could ruin any viewing potential. You might have to go, you know, you might have to look out there and try to see, look at the GO-16 satellite imagery and see what areas are more clear if you're going to try to view that Aurora Borealis. So heads up for that if you're going to be out and about trying to view the northern lights. But anyway, um, yeah, so we'll do everything again tomorrow. We'll take a look at and see what the models say about that next ridge coming in here. Is that trough going to get down here? We'll have a chance to bring some precipitation our way. All good questions. We'll dive into those details here tomorrow. And I hope you guys are having a good day. Get out there, enjoy that sunshine, and I will talk to you guys then.